thank you for being here again today i want to talk about the things i wish i would have known before having children and i i'm posting this here on my youtube channel in order to inspire the younger people that follow me that consult with me that don't have children just yet kind of like they look up to me as a mentor like an auntie per se and i just want to share this with you i'm, I'm not trying to create in your reality but I just wish that I had like an older person that would have told me this because I was always inspired by older people. I always really had an ear to listen to what they had to say because I knew that they had some wisdom behind that. So I wrote down some little bullet points that I was thinking about, you know, yesterday when I was having this conversation with a younger person who asked me to help her, you know, with, you know, her child when she has one, right? And so these are the things that I wished I would have knew to make my baby's life and even my life easier. The first thing I shared with her was diet. Diet is so important. Before you try to have a baby with somebody, make sure that you know what health and wellness is. That don't mean you have to be a vegan. You can still eat your meat and your pork chops and everything that you want to eat. But just think about this here, your baby sucking on this umbilical cord is really like trying to take some of your juices, some of your minerals, some of your life force in order to be formed. If you don't have any, that's going to cause complications for you and deficiencies for you and make your pregnancy unbearable, like, you know, bedridden most often than not. Because I, I was like that in my journey. And my journey when I was pregnant, I didn't know nothing about no health and wellness. I was eating chips and pickles and living off of Popeyes, a two-piece spicy white with mashed potatoes and a jalapeno pepper. Drinking bark through beer down back to back, but babe, the baby, it needs minerals like magnesium that's necessary in all the organs of your body. You know, brain development, you know, um, zinc, iron, oxygen delivered to it through the umbilical cord. So I would say diet as far as knowing about pink Himalaya sea salt, knowing that you need spring water for your life force, knowing you need spring water because it helps you with your electrolytes, knowing that you need iron because most people that get pregnant, they become anemics during the pregnancy and they have to take the little green peel and they poop in the green peel out because this is like a rock and your body not even identifying it as minerals, as iron. Knowing the leading mineral for iron is sarsaparilla. Look that up if you're getting pregnant or about to become pregnant because you need that oxygen, that iron delivered to your body. Knowing that you should, you don't have to, before you get pregnant, eat a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You overbearing your stomach. And a lot, this is why a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of people on TikTok, they're talking about they're trying to have babies and they be 200 and plus pounds and it, it's complicated. And doctors telling them that they can't have or can't conceive. That's because they have an overload of toxicity in the body. And I don't want to preach about that. You do what's comfortable with you. But in hindsight, looking back, I would have been a mother preparing my body for nurturing a baby. Because this is something that's growing inside of you. You want to nurture it not only with love, but in the physical reality with the love that you're giving yourself. Even the things that you're putting on your body, even the chemicals, like the deodorant that you're using prior to becoming pregnant, you know, to re allow you to release toxins out of your body in instead of clog up your pores. And I could help you with that on my website with diet and all, but I'm not here to promote those things. I'm here to teach you something, babe. The next thing, your partner. Your partner. You know, it's like some people say, you know, you, you can't pick who you love. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. And you should be like, you know how they say men pick the, choose the woman that he's going to marry, but the women are often choosing the men who they going to have sex with, right? So you choose, you are the one that's choosing to open up your legs. You are the one that's choosing to pick that person. Choose wisely. And, you know, sometimes we want to choose with the, one, the ones with the money, the ones that look good, that have a six pack. I've been there already. The ones that look good to the eye. But baby, how about instead you choose the one that bring you some peace? Because you and your baby going to need some peace. That know how to love you and nurture you and put you, you right after him. That he has love for himself and then he have an overflow love to give you. Because that's going to determine. See all that baby mama drama? When you're pregnant, your baby feeling all of this here. 
When you're pregnant, see, we talk about root chakra energy. We talk about trauma, but your baby from zero to seven is soaking up all of your trauma and your experiences. Your baby is feeling that while in the womb. Your baby know when you mad. Your baby know when you don't feel safe, when you don't feel loved by your partner. Your baby know these things. And so already, before the baby is even formed in the belly, it knows the energies that it's about to partake in in the physical reality so it's learning your trauma is no it's, it's it's hearing you when you telling him that he ain't shit he ain't never gonna be shit and all this and that he is hearing you when you're fighting it's hearing and feeling your heart beating when you're scared it understands it knows its father's voice before it comes forth in physical form and so it's developing its program we always talk about you know law of attraction in the program the default setting of the program it's happening at that precious time so i feel like a partner is so important and so when you're choosing him choose a partner that know how to love himself in order to be able to love you choose a partner that know how to love his mother <laughs> his mother that's a little key indicator too about love from a guy if he could love his mom because most often I, I'm, I'm, you're hearing this here from somebody that do consultations now I ain't telling you this here from something I don't know I have men and women that I consult with and I'm, I'm giving you all some little key pointers that's gonna help you so you don't be calling me <laughs> so, so, so oftentimes when, when a man don't know how to love his mama that's how he treating them women and it starts because he don't love his mom because maybe his mama wasn't there and so now everybody in the physical reality or uh, have a bitch or a thought tendency because that's how he looks upon his mother yeah because he hate her and so we we want to choose wisely before you get pregnant by a man that secretly has the potential to hate you or give up on you judge you put you down because all of this here we, we 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 rewriting the story we're creating another version of ourselves we're the ancestors we're writing our wrong so to speak with each generation that come forth so you can be the person where it stops with you can be the person where it stops with with depending upon who you choose right so choose wisely and then this is a this is energetically a, a signal on how you know how to choose when you are feeling butterflies in your stomach when you see some guy body you forget your name or you so flabbergasted by him like oh my god he's so fine or, oh my god he, i'm getting so moist oh my god this and that and the third that that ain't him that's the one you run from, baby. That is a signal telling your body that, oh, I have memory. I remember that trauma right there. Let's go do it again. That's really what that is. The one that you will really, in hindsight, the one I would choose is the one that bring me peace. The one that seems kind of boring, but know how to love on me, that admires my beauty, that takes time, that's patient with me. That's the one. That's the one because that's the one that's resonating with my heart instead of resonating with my trauma or my program that I already experienced. Life always give you indicators within. You have an internal GPS within that lets you know which one is for you and which one is your old trauma. So a partner would be something that I will pay attention to next. Okay, and talking to your belly, talking to your baby, letting your baby be around soft music instead of grabbing the wall type music all the time. Wait, they, I'm talking about the music that you listen to. Allowing you to be in a harmonious state of being where you are listening to music sometimes, where you don't have to work up until the day before you go in for labor, where you have time alone where you could be still and meditate where you have the ability to focus and think good thoughts because all of this, all of these things that you're doing, you're passing it on to your children. So the next thing I would say is <laughs> breastfeeding. And I would say breastfeeding is something that I would do. Now, mind you, I didn't do this with my older boy, but in hindsight, hindsight is always 2020. And if I have another child, I will. It was so tender after I had my baby and the, the, him sucking on my nipples after I gave birth. It had been through so much because I, my diet was crappy. 
I have been through so much with the pregnancy because my my um, immune system wasn't up to par, right? That it was unbearable seemingly for him to be breastfed by me. But in hindsight, in me knowing, me and being an herbalist, me be doing research, me me knowing myself now, I now know and better understand that if I would have, it would have contracted my breasts better. Like, right? It would have contracted my my stomach. You know, you know how they have the ladies with the bigger, I'm not talking about the little stretch marky type stomach, but I'm talking about the bigger kind of fupas after they have a baby. Breastfeeding helps with that. Not only that, if you pay attention to breast, I mean, the, the pablum, um, the um, in, instant milk in the can is what I'm trying to say, the Similax. The Similax, and, and I don't remember the other ones, but I'll call it Similax. Some of them have something called DHA. And this is a synthetic form of it that they put inside of the can. But your breast milk naturally gives your baby everything that it needs for its brain development. So this is why I would encourage you to breastfeed. Not only that, but it creates a healthier bond, a closer-knit bond. And you could see this in the physical reality when you see a vegan baby versus a canned Similac baby that little vegan baby would be like so alert with the canned Similac baby his head or her head just be wobbling like you know the attention span not really there you can really tell the difference between the two because that vegan or healthier type baby is so alert it's almost like you're saying hi how are you you know like I've been here before kind of like energy right and so this is because of those minerals that are absorbed from the breast milk. Also, speaking of um, minerals being absorbed, the placenta as well. You know, oftentimes we don't know what people with, with the medical industry, I won't say people, what the medical industry is doing with our blood and, and our, um, our penis tips, our placentas. But <laughs> I don't want to speak on the negative side of that, but just keep in mind that your placenta is a life force that they can use medicine use it to make medicine and heal other people so while you are thinking about getting it cut with scissors that juice that extra fluid that extra melanin is really what the baby needs so in hindsight i would have attached to the placenta longer I would have stayed attached to it until it dried up on its own because now I know that the babies need that for brain development. Now I know that because of the research I've done, I know that <laughs> it's worth a lot of money in the physical reality. And so especially if you have a blood O type, that universal, that Anunnaki type of blood. And so I would keep the baby attached to the umbilical cord. I would not take the epidural you know I would do natural childbirth and I would not get a c-section either not that I had but I'm saying that because oftentimes you hear all the time that they're going to induce my labor they're going to induce my labor they, they're going to induce my labor that means that they're going to charge me more money mm -hmm. so that means they're going to get some more money off of this that means I'm not going to carry it and wait for it to naturally come in its form if you think about nature if you think about you know if you have a tree like I have this uh this grapefruit tree like right and so you can see this just by trees like the fruit are just full down from the tree when it's really really ripe and ready you don't necessarily have to go pulling on it and tugging it out you'll see that there's overflow when it's ready or even if you if you were to go to it when it's ripe and ready if it didn't fall down yet all you have to do is just like that and it's just gonna come off like right inducing the labor it's just the same it's, it's just like it's like you going to the tree before it's ready you yanking it out and it, it didn't get all of the juices or the substance that it was sucking on that it needed to be good or delicious for you. And so that's just how I think about it in hindsight now now for babies, for children, you know, that, that you bring it forth in the physical reality. Just let them come. All of this, oh, oh, they, I'm overdue. So what? I know you get tired. I did too. You know, you just be ready to let that that baby go or drop that load and your back hurting and your titties hurt and you just want to go to sleep on your belly again. I understand. But as a mother, you we signed up for that. We signed up for that. 
And so, and, and another thing, speaking of signing up for that, if you're younger and you listen to this video on my YouTube channel, I'll say, baby, just, 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 just take your time. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta have no baby too soon because oftentimes when you people come to me talking about they wanting to have a baby, they're really just looking for love in the all the wrong places. I'm talking about the young ones. When they're wanting to have a baby, they're looking for love in all the wrong places because they felt like they ain't get the love or they're not getting the love right now. So now they're going to give the love to this baby that come forward. And they don't even care, some of the young ones, if they have a man in their life. Not to say that they can't raise the child with or without a man. I'm just saying they don't care about nothing but the fact that they want love. And so now they're going to bring a child up in the world. But these are the same people who don't even know how to love themselves just yet. So a child is really not something that you need at this moment in time and space. It's really not. It's really time for you to fill up your cup with love for yourself first. And so then when you have overflow for yourself, then you have a, now you have enough love to give your overflow to your, ch your children, your child. Give a little bit of your overflow to your partner now. So hold your horses, pump your brakes, you know, you, you go, you're going to have a child. You're going to have a child, but don't, don't, let's, let's right these wrongs is what I'm saying. You know, let's, 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 let's be mindful of bringing forth a new generation. Cause you now, you now are going to be the next version of the ancestors. Like, right. And so back in the day, I know you probably know somebody in the physical reality that had, you know, I could speak of my mama that had my older sister when she was like 15 years old. Back in that day, they were just like married off. My mama was just like thrown off to my daddy who was probably only a year or two older than her. You know, you get thrown off in that day to marriage. And so now we're an example of a lot of us. We have a trauma because of this here. You know, we have the trauma of mama being 15 16 years old when she had me so she didn't even know she was just a child she was raised me because grandma told her to go with my daddy and she didn't know how to love herself just yet she didn't know how to cook she was just fending for herself just imagine being 15 years old with a baby <laughs> i have my children right now in this time in life are older than 15 years old and i can't imagine them with a baby like, I, as their mother, look at them like, boy, you don't need a baby no time soon. So just imagine 15 years old. So these are our older generations. And so we don't want to duplicate that because we, from that generation, turned out to, <laughs> to have our little issues. Because maybe that relationship, when mom and daddy got married, maybe that relationship didn't last. Maybe daddy left us. You know, we were little girls and we were little boys. You got to think about these things when you're opening up your legs to have a baby in the physical reality. Or then you got to think about the fact that, <laughs> that that you never reach your 20s and your 30s and you don't even really know yourself just yet. And then when you know yourself, then maybe you ain't going to want to know that person. Maybe you don't think you're compatible with that person, right? Just like kind of like when we go to college, you know, we pick... We say, you know, when we're, when we're 12 and all the way up to like 18, 19, before we go to college, oh, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be this because somebody put that little thought in our head. And then we go to college and we change the major or we get the degree and then we realize, man, I, this ain't me. This ain't what I wanted to do. I was living my life through what mama wanted. Mama just wanted me to go to college. She wanted me to be the first one to be the lawyer. But I don't really like this. I like dogs. I wish I would have been a veterinarian. <laughs> and so you got this, 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 this law degree, but you got a whole gang of dogs in your house. You know, you setting, because this is your passion now. So you setting and you watching dogs on the weekend. No, no, no. Skip all of that, baby. Right the wrongs. Don't, 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 don't follow the road that, 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 that everybody is on. You know, that broad road that leads to destruction, that leads to you wasting a lot of your time. Do what you love to do. Find out what you are in love with. Find yourself first. Because then when you find yourself, it'll be easy for you to find a partner because he's going to be a reflection of your found self, of your falling in love self, of yourself that has a, a, a impeccable diet, of yourself that has a good body that is ready to give birth or bring forth life, new life, beautiful life, life without this ease, life without disharmony. You owe yourself this. And not only that, you love, you owe your child this. Because I'm going to tell you one thing, if you don't have a child right now, when you give birth to a child, that child is going to be the love of your life. You do not know love until you, you are given this bundle of joy in your hands. And it's like, oh my God, 
this is me, this is a reflection of me. And so at this time, at this time it given to you, you want to be prepared for that thing. You want to prepare yourself for the love of your life, the unconditional love of your life. As a mother, this will be the unconditional love of your life. So prepare yourself for that moment, mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially, which leads me to something else. That's why you want to take your time because you want your money to be right too. I shared on one of my TikToks how my money was not right when I had my firstborn child. Like the day before I gave birth to him, I was actually sleeping out to get a voucher to go um, on Section 8. Like, right? He will, you know, my baby's father, we weren't married at that time. We were just boyfriend and girlfriend. I got pregnant before we got married with my first son. I was married by the time I had gave birth to my second son. But I'm just saying, financially, I wasn't up to par. I say that to say that I used government assistance for two years because financially I was not up to par. And so that added a little extra stress to my my life or the, you know, my zero to seven childbearing, I mean, life force days of my baby because now we're on Section 8. And you know, anything, if you know anything about anybody that's been on Section 8, they're all in your business. You know, you got to go down there and, and get, you know, and, and deal with them slumlords and stuff. You got to have the people in the office watching you. And it's just too much. It's just like, you know what? I'm an introvert and I couldn't, I couldn't take it long. That's not probably why I got off the thing in two years because I don't like all of them people in my, in my world, you know, just doing inspections and, and just pretty much they had the mindset that you was just going to do the worst, like, right? And like, almost like I didn't deserve to have like clean carpet. I maybe didn't deserve. So I was in this little apartment with a slumlord and fixing up their house. You know, but getting the worst. And at the end of the day, it was because I, my cup wasn't overflowing. I could blame them, but I was only being able to live there, only attracted to that particular environment because of the frequency that I was emitting. And my frequency at that moment was, I wasn't worried yet, but I had a baby. You see, because I too, I'm, I'm guilty that I was looking for that love in all the wrong places at one moment in my life. So I'm trying to give you cheat codes to pass that up, to be better than me, baby. To work on the love for yourself, to send out a signal for yourself that you're worthy. And so since you're worthy, you're going to make sure that your partner is attuned to the same frequency that you are on. That your partner and you have that financial, you don't have to, you don't have to be, you know, too over the top with money, but at least be to the place where you're not on Section 8. You're not living paycheck to paycheck. At least have a couple of months of, ahead of your rent or be to the place where you have your own little apartment at least and you're not still living in mom house because the reason why I was going down there was simply because I was still in mom house. And I just wanted so much to have a, a house, a roof over my baby head that I was playing, paying the bills for. And so you don't want to be struggling through that. And then, then so now you get the place. Now you got to struggle living paycheck to paycheck to just get the furniture. And then you got to get the furniture. And now you got utilities. And now you got to eat. And now you're pregnant. And now you still got to work. And that's going to make your stay at work longer. So now you got to stay at work. The whole nine months because you got to make the money and he got to make the money because y'all really don't together don't make that much money in hindsight baby come up come up while you at home right the wrongs come up while you at home save your money go to school and do the thing that you want to do now what mommy we're more in the family want you to do don't let and, and respectfully do what makes you feel good because you're gonna make a whole lot of time be wasted. You're going to look back and you're going to realize you was living through, through mama. And I know your mom and no disrespect to your mom. I know your mama, your grandma, and your daddy, and whoever else that's feeding you with their desires. Oh, I know they mean well, baby. But at the end of the day, you follow their path. You're going to get to a place in your life that you, you realize, wait, hold up. This, this ain't me, mama. I'm sorry, mama. I really just want to do me, mama. <laughs> and I wouldn't steer you wrong in that area, baby. And so the next thing I would tell you to do is to pay attention to what you put in inside of your body as far as I'll do like this here. I'll do like this here so I don't get my life taken down. 
as far as the people in the white coat, you know, they'll tell you at the at so many months or whatever, you got to do like this here with your baby and give them those things right here in their arm or in their leg is what I'm saying. Be mindful of those things <clears throat> because your baby going to come forth in physical form, especially if your diet is up to par, especially if you gave them the life force from the placenta, especially if you bonded with them with music and talked to them while they were in your belly, especially if you were being still and realizing that you are God and you are creating, <laughs> you are a creator. And so your baby gonna have everything that it need. It does not need heavy metals, mercury, and, and all kind of toxic injections in its body, right? Because of your placenta, your melanin, your carbon, your life force already gave it the healing powers that it needed from that placenta, from your breast milk. So now, <laughs> here's another thing to add. Do your own research. Don't just listen to me, but I'm speaking out of love and I'm speaking out of wisdom. Here's the thing about that as well. It can cause side effects. Do your research, right? It can cause side effects for your baby. And this is the real thing. Your baby's immune system really is not developed just yet when you at the hospital, if that's where you choose to go. It's not developed just yet. It's gonna take a couple of years for it to fully have its own first little immune system. So it's really weak and it's really fragile, so to speak at that time. Now, what makes it stronger is you giving it its breast milk. What makes it stronger is you letting it latch on that placenta until that thing dry out. That's what's going to make it strong. What, what's going to make it weak is if you were ready to inject it, right? With all kind of things that they practicing, all kind of people that's practicing medicine on your baby. Just do your own research. I'm just here to share the information. I can't create in your reality, but this is what I would do in hindsight. Okay, let me see. Um, oh, and feeding the baby. This is going to be the last thing right here. And then I look at these comments and feeding the baby. So you know how people juice, juice um, in physical reality? In hindsight, the juices that or the food that I would give my baby after, you know, the milk, um, after it weans off on breast milk. I would give my baby pulp from real fruit, organic fruit, like, right? I'll make it myself, like, right? Because I juice now in my physical reality. So this is the thing. So nothing is really wrong with juicing if you do it this here way, especially for babies. Like, say, for example, I would go get a honeydew melon, and I do this all the time. I get a honeydew melon. A honeydew melon makes for me and my juicer a half a gallon of juice. I would keep that juice and I would I would give that to my baby in its bottle, that juice. But also that pulp that is put inside, matter of fact, wait, hold up. That pulp that is put inside of um that's on the other side of the blender. This is it right here. This is really what I eat. This is my breakfast. I ain't eat breakfast, I just woke up, y'all. Anyway, this pulp, I will put this here in a little uh jar. And I would make sure it's one of them um, really those um, pop sealed jars. And so I would put that in there and that'll be my baby's food. That'll be my baby's food. And I would spoon feed it with the pulp that I got from real fruit, like the honeydew melon that I just showed you. And I would give it spring water. And you know, and, and you know this, they have this little gold syrup that they used to milk, but I wouldn't give my baby that. I'll give my baby some agave, just a little tad bit of agave. Something that I know comes from uh, nature. You know how they say you could give your baby the sugar water, for example. Like, oh my God, I went to this baby to see this girl, a baby in the hospital, and um, you know, um, they they had already been shot, uh, some other vaccination shots or whatever. And as soon as I walk in the door, they come to take blood and do some other things. And they have now in the hospital where they have little sugar water packets. So now while they sticking the baby and getting blood and all this here they'll give the baby it's this little plastic little thing with a little top that you could twist they'll give the baby sugar water all right so the, the baby is so busy getting addicted to high fructose corn syrup that it ain't gonna cry you know it's kind of like to get the baby to not be so fussy like right now and so the mama had to hold the baby down and the nurse was sticking the baby with the needle and they asked me of all people to give the baby the sugar water and I'm like in my mind I'm like 
no, I don't want to give the baby this here stuff because I don't, I don't, you know, I don't use white toxic sugar. So if anything, I would give like, if, you know, when you're giving a baby something sweet or whatever, I would give it agave. I would, because agave, just a little bit instead of white sugar, because agave is a prebiotic for that baby. Agave, agave would, be, would be minerals for the baby. You know, just just a lot of little tricks of the trades that I know now, because hindsight is always 2020. But I would never, 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 never do that to any other babies. Like, right? So I'm standing up there and they told me to give it, and, and I, I gave it one little drop. And the baby, it was almost like giving somebody crack almost. Like the baby was like, you know, fiending for it after I gave it one little drop. And I was like, what, what is this? And they said it's sugar water. And I was like, oh, really? And I didn't want to give the baby no more. <laughs> Even though it wasn't my baby, I was like, oh, really? And I was like, y'all almost finished? You know, because I, cause I just know too much and I, when you know better, you want to do better. And that's really was the purpose of this particular video in preparing young ladies to be pregnant, to have a, a, a good season during your pregnancy. Cause you're supposed to be glowing. You're supposed to be letting your light shine. People are supposed to say they know that you're pregnant. Even before you show, you're supposed to just have this, this aura of energy around you because if you think about it in the spiritual essence you don't went to the throne of god your portal is like a life center like right men can't bring forth life so it's almost like you connected to god you sucked with god and and in and, and you and the father in that moment became one and it planted new life inside of you to bring forth so if you're gonna bring forth new life why not bring forth some harmonious life take care of your diet make sure you're choosing the right partners make sure you're talking to your baby and your baby is is, is hearing your fa the baby's uh, father's voice that you're loving on it that you're loving on your body and you're not putting your body down like oh man my titty's sagging Oh man, I'm getting these ugly dark spots. That's your melanin, baby. That's your life force. We need to really be educated on these things before we, we, we embark on being pregnant and then hating ourselves and then hating our body and then hating our stretch marks. Baby, you went through some things to, to do that. You know? You, you, you are a unique creature in order to be able to do that. So love on yourself. Love on yourself first. Love on yourself completely before you bring forth another generation that's looking for love in all the wrong places. Okay? All right. Let me see this here. Let me see. I'm going to go back and look at these comments. All right. Hey, love. Hey, Dreamy. Hey, Miss Ann. Thank y'all for coming. Hey, Swag. Yeah. What's the best combination to sustain a high level of nutrients? Hey, C7. The best combination would be what I was um, speaking of, just spring water. Make sure you're getting some magnesium. Magnesium. Even if you get magnesium flakes, like in your um, back. Let me see. I think I have some up here. Even if you're getting, even if you're soaking in just magnesium flakes. These are available on, um, on Amazon. And you only need like just a little half a cup maybe once a week to get that magnesium magnesium is so important in your body vitamin c is so important in your body or if you want to just soak with um dead sea salts this here is high in magnesium too so one or the other you really don't need both of them but that'll help you with your magnesium and that's going to help you um with your sleep magnesium is needed for every organ in the body with your sleep with your skin actually with um even with the brain development, how I was talking about with the baby, because it's needed there as well. And vitamin C. Vitamin C is important. I make um, dehydrated key lime peel powder deodorant. And so always my body has enough vitamin C. Vitamin C is going to help you with your skin while you're pregnant as well. It's going to help you with your energy. It's um, antioxidant, antioxidant, antioxidants inside of it that really help and replenish your body. As far as iron, I spoke about sarsaparilla. That's an herb that is like the highest amount of iron to deliver oxygen to your body and eating light foods. You know, we get our cravings and stuff when we're pregnant, but you ain't gotta eat 
all of that that you crave for in abundance, you know, you could get your craving, but still incorporate some healthier food choices. Like I just like to go to herbs as it as a source. And if you do this before you're pregnant, you're not going to have those cravings because anytime you have cravings, that's something inside of your body that's kind of like taking over, so to speak, making you want. And that's most often like a little parasite, a little bug that's making you know and, and that's gnawing at you and making you want these things. And so now you gotta go, you gotta go to the store and please it. But if you do these things and clean the body before you have a baby, you're not going to have those cravings. Because, like, I never, ever crave sugar. Never. Like, my boys was here. And, you know, they're they not on the level of being a vegan and clean eater like me. But they were here and they had cravings for certain things. And I was like, man, y'all got to get up out of here because y'all eating too much. <laughs> I'm not used to all of that eating because once you set that foundation, it becomes law for you. And you don't have no bugs and critters Ted, waking you up in the middle of the night. I don't eat ice cream. I don't crave for chocolate. I don't even like chocolate. I don't like sugar. My mouth just, just even talking about it, it makes me just, ugh. Like I was just telling you all, I won't give the baby sugar water. That wasn't even my baby. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, I, I gave myself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you, Moki54. I appreciate that. Hey, Chan. Thank you for being here. I appreciate that. Let's see. Hey, Move. I appreciate you, Latoya. Move. I thank you for the roses. And then the cycle repeats itself. Hey, Z Zaria. Thank you for being here, baby. Yeah. And so the cycle repeats itself. And then we have children who then they're looking for love in all the wrong places all over again because you were the parent that was around the trauma and you helped them to create their trauma so to speak because you picked the wrong partner and actually so those feelings that i was talking about that when you feel a certain way with a certain guy and it make you feel you know oh my god you know he's so fine and that nervous energy or whatever that feeling maybe the mama felt that feeling when that baby was in the belly and that because our subconscious mind never sleeps it remembers all and so when the baby was in the belly it felt the mama feeling that and now you out the belly you the baby now and now you wondering oh he must really be turning me on because oh i feel like da da da, da when i'm around him no that's your subconscious mind your memory of when your mama felt that that feeling from the person that treated her bad from maybe being around your toxic at that time daddy you know and so you remember that feeling because you got to remember that we're all thought we're all consciousness right really and so you remembering that consciousness, that state of being that mama was in and now that's a turn on so this is why you're attracted in the physical reality to the bad boy this is why because you remember mama had a bad boy and so the good guy, so to speak, is so boring to you and you don't even want to go over there because it don't feel like nothing. But that's home. That's the road that's the least traveled by in the world that you should go to explore. If you want to evolve, the, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting new results. Well, you already know that's something that you did already because your body is sending you a signal that, oh, we done did that already. That's why you feel so goofy and, cl and clumsy around him. You can't get your, yourself right. That's why the relationship ain't working out right. Because guess what? The memory said it ain't work out right when mama was doing it. What make you think it's going to work out right for you? You remember all things. You're like a sponge. And this is, this is how, so when the baby come forth, this is how the development of their zero to seven years old of that foundation of their subconscious mind is being made upon. It's built upon those things. The people that come consult with me, that's what, look, as soon as we start talking, I'm like, okay, let's go to the beginning. What was your childhood like? Was your mom and your daddy there? What's going on with that? You Do you see them? Do you love them? Do you like them? How did you feel when, when, when daddy left you? We gotta go to that because that's what all of our trauma and stuff comes from. And this is why I felt it was so important that I do this video for a younger generation, for them to at least get a peek, a glimpse of somebody that know what they're talking about, that experienced it, that consult with people, that evolved from it, and, and, and mastered it, <laughs> and became a better version of myself because of it. And so, 
So, so your child, when you give birth to your child from ages zero to seven, it's going to go into that cycle of root chakra. Did mama, did mama, was mama afraid or was mama focused on survival? Of, of, of desire and creativity. Was mama out there wild and out looking for love in all the wrong places? It's going to go through that cycle of power and will. Did mama feel powerless? Of, of the heart chakra at, at, at age four. Well, was mama heart wide open? Did mama know how to love? Did mama and daddy speak their truth? Did mama and daddy know themselves? Was mama and daddy Christ conscious aware that all is God? So if mama and daddy wasn't all of them seven, and all of them seven wasn't fluid in alignment, then guess what? The baby ain't gonna know it either. Because the baby soaked up that program from zero to seven years old and it became law for them. And so right now in the physical reality, the people who I'm consulting with are the people from their zero to seven year old when their, sub, when their chakra pools of energy was supposed to be in flow and supposed to be in balance. Mm -mm, it wasn't. So now they're an adult. They're adult, they're, they're older, but they're still operating in the physical reality from zero to seven from that trauma that they either absorb from the belly, from the way that other people around them were feeling, and the way that they felt themselves about being around those particular situations. That's it. They, that is your life. And so people be like, I don't know why this here keep on happening to me. Because you on your zero to seven program. You're doing that. You're rinsing, you're repeating. Now you don't notice it though. You don't be noticing it. It's almost like there's a sticker on your head that's telling the world, my daddy beat me. My uncle molested me. My mama was jealous of me. Or whatever your trauma was, it's a sticker on your head. And so we all out here in the physical reality, we get to see your sticker, but you don't because it's a subconscious thing. So that means it's hidden from you. So you walking around and you're like, oh no, I'm, I'm good. I'm over the fact that my, my uncle molested me. I'm good, but we still see your sticker. And we're like, no baby, you're not good because if you was good, it wouldn't be on your head. And so it takes you going within and rewriting the story of you now beginning to love on that little girl inside of you that is looking for love in all the wrong places. You now you got to be her savior as the adult because it's not it's not mama's um, responsibility no more. It's not daddy. It's not even the uncle who molested you responsibility to come to tell you sorry. Now you got to tell you sorry. Now you got to tell you, look, we all we got it. I got you. You're the savior. So in order, in order for your baby, you know, if you're young and listening to this, your baby, the light force that, that you're going to bring in this world to not have these trauma issues, to not be magnet, magneti, magnetically drawn to other people that have little boy issues, remember this that I told you. Because I'm only telling you this out of love. And my purpose here is not to sell you anything. I'm trying to tell you this because, baby, when you evolve, I evolve. Because you're, you're me. Life happens through me. Everybody on here is an expression of me. And when you look at people in your kingdom, in your universe like that, you give back to it. And we as a collective consciousness, we just become greater. So learn how to give back. And this here video is just you giving back to your offspring, so to speak. Give back so you can become greater. And that's the greatest legacy that you could ever leave behind. Is giving your life, your life experiences to someone else so they could be better than you. Okay? Yeah. I just have one son and I want three more. So I'm gonna need a strong queen to pull this off. Oh yeah. Don't, 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 don't just pick anybody. Don't just pick anybody. Lord. Same here, Nia says. Hey, Nia. Yeah, hey, Blue Strip. Hey, from Alabama. Goddess, Kiai. Speaking the truth. Yeah, hey, mister. That's great. Good idea. Hey, Empowered Minds. Oh, thank you for being here. Yeah, and I just want, like, I do this here. 
on my YouTube channel and I've done it before. I've talked to the younger people about dating and about letting people show, see your beauty instead of all of this bag catching that these, this new generation is really bamboozled by. And they often are bamboozled by these things because they see this in a larger scheme of the people in the music industry that they really look up to for some reason that have trauma. <laughs> they have trauma. Now they might have money, but they have trauma. And the example of their life shows that drama in so many ways. But the younger ladies, younger women rather, they look up to them for some reason. But no, go within. Salam, goddess. Hey, Indy. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Hey, products. Thanks. Immaculate Conception. That's what I'm talking about, Supreme. That's what I'm talking about. Immaculate Conception. Can you juice frozen fruit? Uh, you have to add some kind of liquid to it when it's frozen. Yeah. But, I mean, you can. Freak. I got some strawberries up in there in the freezer right now. And so... I, I add my raw fruits to the frozen sometime and because the frozen is so hard I have to have a, a little bit of liquid so I add water or coconut water that's a good good really good detoxer right there coconut water it will clean out your gut from a real coconut that's really a good uh, start for um, hydration too but I use I use actual um, solid coconut they have solid coconut and they have liquid coconut is really good start for everybody that's on a health journey i have a big old container of it but i keep this here coconut oil and it's really hard because it's been in a refrigerator and it's solidified i keep this in a refrigerator for when i just want a piece because i consume coconut oil coconut oil is anti-inflammatory antiviral anti-parasitic antimicrobial antifungal it is full of amino acids and that's really something good prior to you know preparing your body for a baby to clean up the gut and to get your amino acids that you need it's a really good pre-workout too coconut oil i do that actually i just did it they have I let it melt in my tea that i was just drinking because my tea was hot and i just put a little bit of it there in of that in there and so I have my coconut oil, my so-called amino acids, because that's my pre-workout. It gives me energy or calories, so to speak, to burn because I don't eat bread and pasta and all that stuff, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, to answer your question, yeah. Hey, Mr. Holistic, look at you. Thank you for all you do. You're so welcome. Boy, I tell you, you be in alignment. Every time I talk about health and wellness, you show up. I love that about you. I really do in perfect alignment enlightening words thank you you are so welcome mel you're so welcome stopping by between my break at a workout thanks for all you do oh or i appreciate that babe hey spirit uh guys thank you for being here so that's pretty much it that's the end of my uh youtube video but i just want to inspire some little girl you know who out there looking for love in all the wrong places baby Love yourself. You got work to do. I done gave you a whole list of things to do to take care of your diet first. Yeah, to take care of your mind first, to know yourself first, and to make sure you're picking your partner because you decide who you're going to open up them legs to. You decide, and in deciding, you got to understand this one thing. You, you're probably looking for a baby, but you open up your legs. You could open up your legs to having a baby. You could open up your legs to having an STD too. And oftentimes, some people open up their legs and have an STD that they cannot get away from in the physical reality. And I want to leave that on your mind, not into, not to scare you, but I, to teach you how to be wise and to have discernment of what you're opening up your legs to. Because I consult with those type of people too. Those people, you know, that's, that's really on their last, so to speak, limb. I consult with them too. So I've heard and, and, and pretty much seen it all. So I'm telling you this out of love. Be wise as a serpent, but yet as gentle as a dove. And you only become wise when you know yourself. Because to know yourself is to know God. 
You gotta, you gotta, you gotta step it up because you look back on all your relationships, all the old people to tell you this to be true. If they look back, if they look back on all of their relationships, they sit there and they talk about how no good so and so was, and how this one didn't have any money, and how this one did this to them. But baby, they were on that frequency too because had they not been on that frequency, they wouldn't have attracted that person. You meet Mister Broke when you are broken. You meet that guy that's gonna cheat on you when you've been cheating on yourself, baby. So let's stop cheating on yourself. That's not being broken to, with yourself. Let's love on yourself first before you give or bring forth life here in this physical reality. Because if not, you just you just adding to the cycle, rinsing and repeating, and bringing another version of your trauma in physical form. Let's do better. Let's be better. Let's evolve. All right. I'm about to get out of here and go and work out. Let me look at these comments one last time. Yep, that's it. This video was from my heart to yours, baby. Take care of yourself. You God, be blessed.